Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're gonna talk about how to make somewhat of a multi-shader using master properties in After Effects. So this week we're gonna take another look at master properties, and we're gonna be building images with this AE multi-shader. That's what I'm calling it because it's kind of like Cinema's multi-shader, kind of. So here we have an image from Freedback that I shot a couple weeks ago. Side note, Matt's music is awesome, so go check him out at Freedback. Take note, those are threes. So this image is built from a single comp that contains mats and textures. We're using master properties to select which ones are shown. And in this particular one, we have this actual image overlaid back over it at 50%. And on each of these multi-shaders, we have a set matte effect. And that's set to look at the image that we want to affect. And we're using the luminance for the mat. Without that, we won't see our image. So if I turn these off, you can see what the base image looks like. And if I solo these, you can see what each piece looks like. So that's one layer. That's another layer. And then that's another layer. So that's how that image is made up. I have another one in here where we don't actually have the other image overlaid on top. And in this one we're using different textures and mats. So you can see we have a different X pattern and we're actually using text in this image as well. So if I open up one of these, you can see the master properties that we're using. I have a slider that picks a texture, a slider that picks a mat, and then an angle control that powers a colorama effect. And you might remember lately we've been using that to shift the tones in a grayscale image so that we can basically like invert things. Right now this one's set to 270. If I set it to zero, it'll be the full effect. Do you see that these brighten up? If I set this to one, it'll be the opposite. If I put 180, it corresponds to about middle gray. And I'm just gonna go back to 270. All right, so let's jump into this multi-shader comp and see how this thing is built. So the most important thing is we have this controller layer that contains those sliders. And I put these into the essential graphics panel so that they're exposed to the main comp. To add these, you just open up the effects in the timeline here and drag them into the essential graphics panel. The rest of this is set up with our mats on top and they're all set to stencil luma and then our textures are on the bottom. So basically with these sliders, you pick one mat, one texture, and the mat's luminance is then stenciled over top of the texture. This mat zero is basically just a white shape so that when it stencils over everything, we see exactly what the texture looks like. It's mostly for testing, but I'm sure you can use that one as well for different effects. So let's just nudge this slider up so we can see what our textures look like. So first we have this X pattern, then we have a few layers I made in JS placement. Some of these are a combo of different things put together. We have a bunch of text from some code. We have this bit pattern that I had a hole cut in here, so I just chopped some stuff back into it. We have this papery texture. We have some other textures where the X is cut out, some textures where the X's have texture, then where the X's are on top of the texture. More of a different type of bit pattern. Bit pattern with texture. Bit pattern where the texture is not the bits. And then for fun, we threw in the digital grain from last week's tutorial. So then let's set this back to that first texture. Then let's go through these mats really quickly. The first one, just some JS placement, mostly JS placement, different versions of that. And then this one, which is another X pattern. So we get kind of this moray thing when you have the X's on here. If I change this to a different one, we'll see something else. So the only complicated thing in this is our expressions. And if we hit EE, we can open this up. I'll open up expressionist to see this, even though it's pretty simple uh, expressionist. The main one's on opacity, so we'll bring that in. All of these layers have the same setup, just with slightly different variations. So here's basically if this comp dot layer controller. So we're looking at the controller layer, grabbing the effect mat slider is equal to one. We'll set our opacity to 100. Else we'll set it to zero. So mat two is number two. Mat zero, that plain white layer, is set to zero. And then the textures basically just say texture here instead of mat with their own corresponding numbers. The only other expression on here is phase shift on the colorama property. And that's basically just directly linked to the angle control that we have. And that's it for the setup of that. So we move to this final example. We have our logo in here and then we have our multi-shader comp in here. And just like in the other ones, it has a set mat on it and we're filling it with yellow. So if we open up our master properties, we have our texture set to 13, which corresponds to that digital grain. Our mat is set to two, which is just one of the JS placement layers. And the angle is set just to the default zero. So if we play this, you see it's basically matted out by our logo image. I'm gonna set this to be a little bit brighter so that maybe it pops up a little bit better over the other parts of yellow. So I'm gonna turn on another one of these layers. I'm just gonna play around with the texture settings here. I'm gonna set it to zero on the mat so that we can kind of go through the textures and see which ones we're picking. Uh, let's pick that text one, that's pretty cool. All right, then I'm gonna go through the mats. Uh, that one's kind of nice. I already have this set to 90 just because I copied these over. And you can use this to actually affect different portions of the image with its angle, but use the same mat through it. So as you move this around, you kind of get different parts of that same mat so that things don't block over top of each other. All right, so let's add one more layer. 
Turn that on. Let's do the same thing in the master properties. I'm gonna set this mat to zero. So we can go through and see what kind of textures we're gonna use. Uh, let's just go with that X grid. And then we'll pick a different mat. Pick that one. And then I'm gonna change the angle to like 180 to get kind of the opposite of it. I'm gonna move this on top and set it to add. There's not a lot in there, so I'm actually going to duplicate this and move it down a little bit and do the same thing. So there it has a little bit of animation. If you want to move these mats around, it's not a great idea to try to move them in here, but you can actually move the mats in their own comps so that different pieces of these are animated. You know what? I'm actually going to add that to the project file download, maybe with some checkboxes, so you can turn animation on and off of the mats and textures independently. Let's add our digital grain back in here. All right, let's add a fill to it. We'll pick a gray out of our palette here. Maybe this one instead. All right, and there we go. Obviously, you can make this a lot cooler if you animate the textures in the background, but this is just a simple setup to test the idea. If you guys want to grab this project file, everything will be in here other than the images of Matt because you don't really need those. Some of the textures are actually constructed in this project, so that's kind of cool too. Some of them are just built outside and brought in. And I'll also animate a couple of these textures so you can see how that works. All right, guys, that is it. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I am Joe, and we'll see you next week. Bye.